Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. Now, the machine over my right shoulder is primarily a metal cutting lathe, but occasionally you're going to be called on to do something eh, maybe a little out of the ordinary wood, plastic, phenolic, whatever. Today's demonstration is going to be turning wood on a metal lathe. Well, that's no big deal, right? So you turn it, you can put a tool in, you can do it by hand like you do on a conventional wood uh, turning machine. But the problem will be holding it. You can squash a piece of wood pretty easy in a setup like that that's uh, pretty powerful for holding steel when steel's peeling away. So I'm going to show you how to make a center for driving wood and a center for the tailstock for your live center that won't crack the wood when you apply too much pressure. So let's grab a couple pieces of scrap stock, 303 stainless, about an inch and a half, give or take, and make something useful out of it. Let's do it. First step in the process is to turn the blank. I'm going to pick a nominal size that I'm going to hold comfortably in a three-jaw chuck or in a collet. And for my purpose, that is a three-quarter inch diameter, 0 0.750. And I guess metric size, that is about 19 millimeters, very close. I found that to be a good size for collets or chucks. And I use it quite often on things that I intend to swap between holding devices. Make sure that when you measure a part during a process like this that the part is uh, relatively cool. Thermal expansion will bite you if you're trying to hit a hard dimension and the part cools down. You're going to wonder why it's undersized. Cuts being taken initially were about a hundred thou deep. That's about two and a half millimeters per side. 770 RPM, and it's about a four thousandths feed rate. Just to make sure I have a nice square corner, I undercut the face right there in the corner. So I can rest square against the collet that I'm going to use. I'm going to put a generous chamfer on the end of this part in case you ever have to bang it with a hammer into the wood that you're going to use. You distort the end of the part and not the diameter. Size the OD of your driving arbor to accommodate whatever material you're going to cut. Just remember that you can't turn the entire wood blank down if the driving center is too big. You'll engage the arbor and probably ruin your cutting tool. I'm going to put a 251 diameter pilot hole in the center. Gives me the option of putting a driving point on this arbor at a later date. It can either be stationary, static, or spring-loaded. It's up to you. It's a lot easier to center a piece of wood if you have lines and you've pre-punched the wood you can just align it with the hard point on this particular driving tool. This is a six flute high speed steel 251 chucking reamer. 330 RPM and that's WD-40 I'm using. For the milling operation, you're going to need to index this part four times. You can do it in a rotary indexer or a square collet block. Set your mill stop to register on a reliable surface. Initially, the depth of your cut is the most important. I put the red Sharpie marker on the OD to see if I was getting close, and then I use a shim underneath of it. I would rather not hit the OD, but I wanted to get close. This is going to be a flip-flop operation. You're going to pull this part in and out a couple of times if you don't have pre-calculated values. And you'll show why in a second. The depth of the cut, the bottom of this end mill, is forming the face of the driving tooth. You do not want the radius to interfere with that face. So you can see the vertical line currently being formed by this cut. 
make sure that vertical line stays away from the center of that through hole. It is a good visual indicator as to exactly where you are. This is a partial depth cut just for setting up my digital readout. Partial depth meaning I'm going less than half the diameter of the cutter deep into the face of this part. Now, depending on the size of the cutter that you're using, that will determine how deep you can go into the face of this particular blank. I'm using a half inch cutter, 12.7 millimeters. I'm going to go about 240 in, so I have a full radius. Now, the deeper you go, depending on how far off center you are, the more this land is going to disappear. So by setting the top down, this is your controlling face on this side, right here inside and inside so adjust your depth and adjust your y-axis travel until this is razor sharp or at the very least the minimum you want to see so that's what i'm about to do i'm going to take a dust ever so slightly on this face right here just a witness cut so i know how far in i can go and i'm going to go from there might be some time lapse here i might cut to the final footage but we'll take it out and show it to you when it's done hang in Currently setting the x-axis to zero, moving in about 235. I want to have a couple of thousands to climb, cut, and finish these faces strictly for cosmetic purposes. This cut is considerably deeper than the superficial cuts taken previously, and now you can watch that red line get thinner as I creep towards my desired geometry on that feature. And without moving anything except the y-axis for nibbling, repeat this for all four teeth. All right, we are about 95% uh, of the way done with this guy, and I think you can see the importance of establishing the depth of the cut first. That allows you to determine how far in you can come with the cutter that you're using. If you do not like how sharp that profile is that's going to bite into the wood right here, use a larger diameter cutter. It'll make for a milder radius here, not so sharp or push beyond center with the cutter that you're using. And you can see by my finger how it would deteriorate the height of that tooth and give you a little bit more rigidity. I'm gonna put this back in the machine, take another 10 thou off of this face right here so clean up those little scallop marks and hopefully make this edge a little sharper 
in the meantime. I'll give you a look at that when I'm done. Here we go. This is what you can expect at the end of the operation. I am very pleased with this. This is intended to be spinning forward. And the hole in the center, you can do whatever you want with the hole in the center. Ideally, put a pin in there with a point on it so you can center it up on your work and as you drive the work down onto it the point can retract down into it if it's spring loaded or just floating however you decide to do it. I'm going to put this back in the chuck. I'm going to squeeze a piece of wood in the machine and I'm going to see just how well this grabs. Let's find out. The tool that I'm going to use to test this little arbor is very hooked. It's high speed steel and it is specifically for cutting wood. I found if you can get under the grain and shear it like a knife, you're in good shape. Too much surface contact just leads to a ratty finish. That's it. I think it'll be clear to see if the point was on this particular driver, how it would benefit the installation of the part. If you've already laid out the center of the part and pre-punched a center, just line up the center before applying the pressure. I'm going to check my concentricity here in a second. It's running out a little bit. I'll make a slight adjustment. I'm happy with that. Watch the gap between the wood and the arbor disappear with the application of the tailstock pressure. That is a solid bite. This is a rather long blank and it would be uh, pointless to turn the entire thing down. But you can see the geometry of that tool works really well at getting under the fibers of the part. It's going to leave a nice square edge on the end as well. And it clears the arbor, which is good. Okay, if my suspicions are correct, this has enough of a bite on it to hold this without the live center. But I'm not going to turn the machine on because naturally it would pitch it out. But let's just see what kind of integrity we have on that grip right there. No doubt about it. Supported. Put a tug on it and see what kind of grip we get. Okay, if you ever grab a hold of a bowl or a lamp or a candlestick and it's got those little star teeth marks in the end, that's how it was done. <laughs> 